Hello everyone, uh, my name is Carl Thomas and I'm going to talk to you today about retrieval practice. Um, so like I said, my name is Carl and I've been teaching maths now at Elsham High School for the past six years. At Elsham, we take part in uh, TLCs, which stands for Teaching Learning Community. So these are opportunities for teachers from different subjects, different departments, to meet up and discuss different ideas from reading that we've been given to do a few weeks before we meet up. Um, so this reading covers different areas of research, namely to do with obviously education, and a topic that particularly resonated with me was long-term memory and retrieval practice. So that's what I'm going to talk about uh, throughout this. I'm going to do a brief description of what it is, and I'm going to tell you how we um, do it within the maths department at Elsham. So about two years ago, in a TLC, we were working our way through the book Understanding How We Learn, and that was by the learning scientists. Uh, Jana Weinstein, Megan Samaraki, and Oliver Cavalloni. And this is where my understanding of short-term memory and long-term memory properly deepened. So research has shown that short-term memory, which is also called working memory, can hold around seven items, give or take two. And this only lasts for about 20 seconds. However, if the information can move from short-term memory into long-term memory, it can actually last for much longer. So how do we do this? We can help store items in the long-term memory by what's called rehearsal. We keep doing the same thing over and over again until we remember it. So let's say in the context of a maths lesson, this could be um, I'm doing a lesson on expanding brackets. We would spend the lesson doing as many questions within the hour as we possibly could. And then students, when they left, would be able to expand a bracket. They'll probably be able to expand a, uh, expand a bracket the next day and maybe even a week later. However, the problem with long-term memory is, it's, is the ability to access a given memory typically declines over time. So using our example of expanding brackets, if I asked a student who had previously been able to do it in the lesson or even a week after the lesson, if I asked that student or the same student to do it, say, a month later, maybe when they had their end of half term tests or end of year test or something like that, they've probably forgotten how to do it, or at least to be unsure and the possibility of making a mistake is definitely increased. So another example we can liken to this is uh, when you drive somewhere, say for the first time. The first time you go there, you're a little bit unsure, you might make a few mistakes on the way, etc., etc. However, after you do that same journey every day for say a week, you've generally got it, no mistakes. Now let's say you don't do that journey for a whole year and then you try and do it again. The likelihood after a year is you'll have a rough idea of where to go, you'll be a little bit unsure, and you'll probably make a mistake, okay? So to avoid, sorry, to avoid this decline in the ability to retrieve information from long-term memory, you need to strengthen the pathway by using retrieval, by regularly retrieving that information over time and in a variety of different contexts, you can actually strengthen the pathway to that information, making it much easier to retrieve. So the process of retrieval is what I'm gonna talk about now and how we do that at Elsham High School, but more specifically within the maths department. The first thing we thought about was how could we do uh, or use retrieval practice in the classroom? So there's nothing special here. We started to use five quick questions based on topics students had previously seen, um, maybe from last lesson, maybe from last month, maybe even stuff they saw last year. And this is just a mix of topics ranging uh, everything from number all the way to shape to algebra, everything it needs to be a mix. And the reason it needs to be a mix is because otherwise they can start to predict answers and true learning doesn't really occur. Um, so sort of trying to explain this a little bit better, I've heard this example, which I think is quite good. So imagine you've got a goalkeeper practicing how to save um, shots. If you tell him that five shots are going to go to the left and then we're going to change and five shots are going to go to the right, he'll find this quite easy in the short term. However, he won't actually truly develop his skills as a goalkeeper. So by kicking the balls randomly and not telling him where they're going to go, he'll find it much more challenging and actually true learning will actually occur and he'll become a better goalkeeper. So some people might be sitting there thinking, hang on a minute, I already do starters in my lessons, in which case, awesome, brilliant, cool. However, we all know what it's like when time passes and you may be a lesson or two behind what you need to cover 
um, could be down to a variety of different factors, okay, which you can't control, but you still need to cover those particular topics, say before a test or before a deadline or something like that. So the first thing that goes is like stuff like the five quick questions, um, just to make sure that you get all the material in before that deadline. However, at Elsham, we decided to force ourselves to stick with those five quick questions at the start of every single lesson, just to see what would happen. Would it actually improve results? And over the first term from September to Christmas, in fact, we're actually only two to three lessons behind where we were in the previous year. So we didn't actually lose that much uh, time as, um, from doing this, but the results were amazing, okay? Using exactly the same test from the previous year on exactly the same year group, we found that every single class on average increased, their results on average increased. The lowest class average increase was 8% per student, and the highest class average was an increase of 17%. So I know what you're thinking. There are lots of different factors that could explain why there was an increase um, in everyone's uh, results on average, and I agree. However, those two results I've just mentioned, the 8% and the 17%, were taken from the same test given to the same uh, uh, from last year and this year. They were given uh, to the classes by the same teacher and they were the same ab ability set. So actually there was a clear improvement from the year before to this year. The only difference being the five quick questions and the fact that the students were constantly, every single lesson, retrieving the past topics that we'd already taught them. Now, although we had great success with this in class, we still had the problem of how can students effectively revise slash practice retrieving at home. In the past, we've said read through your exercise books or maybe buy a revision guide, something like that. And these aren't really great options for a variety of different reasons. So they could have missed a lesson or two, in which case the work's completely missing. So how can they revise it if they haven't got it? What if their notes aren't really clear or maybe even uh, copied down incorrectly so they're actually learning the wrong thing. Also with revision guides we've found that they might use different methods which can confuse the students. Likewise if parents try to help uh, the students they might have been taught a different method when they were a child. In fact that's probably the case they probably were taught a different method and again that can cause confusion. So all these points prompted us in the maths department to create a YouTube channel called A Star Learning Elsham High Maths. We filmed ourselves explaining each topic using the methods we teach in class, as well as examples that um, bring up the misconceptions and the uh, questions that tend to trip students up. So I'm just going to give you a quick demo of this now. Okay, so here is uh, the YouTube channel. Um, that we created. So it's A Star Learning Elsham High Maths. So if you search for that, you'll see that we've got our channel here. So if I click on that, we've got loads of different videos that the students could have a look at with loads of uh, different topics. So inequality regions, completing the square, uh, solving quadratic quadratics. These are the quite obviously trickier topics that we would teach. So to make it a bit easier on the students to find uh, the videos and stuff that specifically they need to do, if you go into playlists, we've broken down um, each, half, each year group into half terms. And then we've, uh, in each particular half term, we've only selected the videos that are relevant to them. So all they could do is go into the search bar here, I'm going to type in year seven. And if you type in year seven, you've got the half term one here, half term two, three, and four. So if I was to click on, say, half term one, there'll be lots of different videos oh, here. In this video, gonna pause it. Um, and then they can have a look at all the videos that are relevant to them for that particular half term. And they can revise and use that as part of their retrieval practice. OK, so that's uh, the YouTube example. OK, so just had a little look at the YouTube channel um, and this proved to be a massive hit with the uh, with the students because they were able to access these videos uh, throughout the whole half term and it's 24 seven and they were effectively able to practice the questions that were on the video. And obviously they could use that retrieval practice for each topic. They a week later forgot how to do something. They could watch the video. Um, as many times as they needed to, to refresh their memories and obviously strengthen that pathway uh, to that particular information in, in the long-term memory. 
obviously this was also really effective as well because if students had missed a lesson they we could uh, obviously point them in direction of that and again they were able to use the youtube channel uh, to help them uh, with their learning however as i mentioned before retrieval needs to be mixed up and need to have a variety of different ways to do something just remember the goalkeeper and you know, having the, the shots on goal being all random. This is the same thing that we tried to do here. So to tackle this particular issue, we decided to create a website that would link everything together. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a quick demo of the website that we have created. Okay, so here we are going to look at the website. So the website is called um, astarlearning.co.uk so if you search for astar learning in uh, google it should be the first uh, result that you see so if we click on here this is the website that we've currently done it is still being constructed but the uh, main structure is there so students could go on to topics um, and have a look and um, specifically pick something that they want to target however just like with the youtube channel we've broken it down into year group so i'm going to stick with year seven and again, we've put it into half term. So if you click on a particular half term, they can have a look at the scheme of work that we'll be doing in that particular half term, or they can have a go and look at the resources. So what they can do when they go onto a particular half term is they can download the homework booklet that we've previously created, which again has got loads of uh, questions, which they've been given a hard copy of this in class, but it's just again, it's there if they want to download it and give it a go again, maybe a week or two later after doing some questions, again, just practicing that retrieval uh, process. Also included QR codes here uh, that link to the YouTube videos directly. Um, link to the YouTube playlist, which I've just shown you in the YouTube little clip. So it goes straight to the playlist uh, there, which you've just seen beforehand. Um, and then you have the actual specific individual topic. So a little recap stuff on adding and subtracting. They've got some averages and stuff like that. And then they've got some algebra. And these are the specific ones that they will need to do. So let's say, for example, I'm a little bit shady on um, how to expand uh, double brackets. So I want to do a little bit of practice on that. So then click on um, expand all brackets. They can have a look at the um, individual YouTube video specifically on that, or they can download a worksheet. Again, QR code there links to the video if they print it off and do it at a later time. So they've got a few questions there for them to have a go at. They can obviously have a look at the answers, again, using the methods that we use in class and the methods that I've done on the YouTube video, so to try and avoid confusion. They can download some exam questions, and have a go at some of those or they can have a go at a quiz again do you link to the youtube video have a go at the quiz multi choice and have a go at some questions on there so if i just zoom all the way down to the bottom and submit after they've done their questions on here they can go on here and if they got a question wrong obviously i didn't put any answers there but if they got a question wrong they could then have a go uh, or they don't know why they got it wrong they can look at the little solution here, just a mini little okay, video. Question. I'll just pause that again, um, showing them how they could actually uh, do that particular question or hopefully try and explain potentially where they went wrong. Um, so yeah, that's the website. It's got everything all in one place. And again, this will allow students, again, 24 seven, seven days a week, whenever they need to refresh their memories, uh, or practice or do some retrieval practice. They've just got more resources at their disposal, allowing them to do that. And again, just in case they were away or if a particular student missed a lesson for whatever reason, um, they can always use this as catch up. It's particularly prominent now in lockdown, actually. This is what we're using to uh, set all of our work um, because it's just all here for them to use. So this is uh, the website and uh, yeah. I'll go back to the video. OK, so while I was in the process of making the website, um, a parent actually contacted the school and suggested that I take my idea of uh, creating a one stop shop, if you like, uh, for revision and a way to for students to practice uh, um, all the different types of questions, topics, basically enabling them to practice retrieval. Um, it's take my idea to sync the city Norwich. And this is where you pitched an idea 
um, to a crowd of IT uh, specialists, coders, um, some finance guys, some um, designers and stuff like that. And then they actually helped you create your idea. So while I was there, I did pitch my idea and I ended up working with a team uh, that helped me to uh, build a mobile app. So why a mobile app when we've got a website? So the app's really good in the way that it allows the students to practice um, all the questions that they need to practice or, you know, again, that retrieval practice on the go. Uh, they don't need to have a laptop or a computer and they can actually use the app without the Internet. Without the Internet, you won't be able to use the YouTube videos. But as far as the actual practicing the questions and uh, digging out that information, those methods from the long term memory, they can do that on the go wherever they are without the Internet. So I'm just going to give you a very quick demo of um, what the app's all about and how that works. Again, this is still being built. Um, but yeah, I mean, let me give you a give you a bit of a tour and uh, how, you, how you do that. OK, so here is the A-Star Learning mobile app. Uh, so it is still under construction at the minute, hoping to be ready uh, for September. So I'll give you a very quick tour about what uh, you can do here. So if I click on, uh, for example, algebra, I've got some different topics here that the students can have a look at. So I've gone to sequences. Um, let's go on to quadratic sequences, a bit of a juicy topic. And again, they've got a question at the top here, multi-choice. We deliberately tried to um, get questions that would trip uh, people up um, to address those misconceptions, really make them think about what, uh, what the correct answer is. Uh, so I'm just going to zoom through all of these because there's 20 questions in total, as you can see in the top left hand corner. So it tells you what your score is. And then apparently I'm not that lucky because I only guessed one out of 20. And again, it gives you a bit of a time. So you can retry this as many times as you uh, want to, or you can go back and try something else. So one of the things that we also are doing, just like mirroring the website and the YouTube channel, is if you click on the Elsham High School button, which I'm just going to do now. Again, I'll have all the year groups here. Just currently got year seven at the moment. And again, we'll have all the half terms, but again, just got the first two at the moment. So I'm going to click on half term one because that's the one we looked at on the website. And again, you'll see the recap topics there. Uh, we've got the averages and, and we've got some of the algebra as well. So I'm just going to click on the algebra. So look at expanding. We did, it, we did expand double brackets last time. So let's do that again. So again, there's 20 questions here. If I press the video button at the bottom left, this is obviously if they have the internet, they can go to the YouTube video where I explain how to do it. So I have a quick little refresher there. And then again, they can do their 20 questions. Um, Again, loads of incorrect answers designed to try and trip them up. Um, and again, obviously, they can try it as many times as they want to. Or oh, even luck unlucky at that time, 0 out of 20, oh, the bad times. Um, so, yes, using this uh, app, again, is a way for them to revise on the go. I've had several um, students say to me, I can't revise. I'm uh, going on holiday. Well, this limits that. Uh, the reason why well, they can't do any work, they can sit here and practice for any um, end of uh, half term test that they might have. And there's a link at the bottom to the uh, website. So everything basically links to everything. The YouTube links to the website, the website links to YouTube and the app, and the app links to the website and YouTube. So basically uh, making it a one stop shop for everything that students would need to do to practice re um, retrieving any topic. Uh, from their long-term memory. And again, we've structured it to try and make it as easy to use uh, for each of the students as possible. So uh, yeah, that's the mobile app, guys. I'll go back to the video. Okay, so in summary, guys, uh, us at Elsham in the Maths Department, we've uh, tried to create as many opportunities uh, for students to practice retrieving information from their long-term memory. Uh, we started within the classroom and then we developed resources to be used outside of the classroom. And it always reminds me of uh, what a teacher at um, our school, Mr. Brockton, said. He says, as educators, we need to remove as many barriers as we can to help students learn. So I believe by having the YouTube videos with all the explanations, having the worksheets, having the exam questions, quizzes um, on the website and the app, so they can constantly test themselves outside the classroom, as well as us, obviously, with the five quick questions, constantly quizzing uh, the students in the classroom. We really have tried to maximise the number of opportunities 
uh, for the students to have that retrieval practice and therefore increase the chances for the information or the topics, however you want to think about it, to have a really strong connection within their long-term memory and hopefully will allow them to get the best results they can when they sit down for um, any test that they may do. Obviously, this is mass related, but hopefully um, you might, it might have sparked some ideas uh, for you in your own subject. So thank you for watching. Cheers.